Do you think your images are too noisy? Don't worry, I will give you five tips how to get rid of noise in your images, or at least how to get less noise in your images. Stick around to see how it's done. Hi there, I'm Peter Forsgaard, an Olympus visionary and a professional photographer from Helsinki, Finland. And before we get into those five tips about reducing noise with your Olympus camera, or actually any other camera brand in that matter, please consider to subscribe to my channel and hit that bell so you get notified when there is a new video online. My channel is all about you getting to be a better photographer and also about Olympus gear, of course. And remember, I post two videos a week. But let's start. I think too many of us are too concerned about the noise and the noise level of your images. And of course noise is a bit matter of a taste also because different camera bands make camera bands, maybe a camera brand would be the right word to say. Different camera brands make uh, or produce different kinds of images. The, the look is a bit different and of course the noise is a bit different. Some have more noise, some have more pleasing noise, some have less noise and so it's not always about the amount of noise, it's also the character of the noise. And the same thing when, when we were shooting film. Films were grainy, but it wasn't the amount of grain, but it was the character of the grain. And the same thing goes with the noise level. And remember always be careful when pixel peeping. Of course you will find mistakes in your images, in your in your files, you will have artifacts and etc etc if you pixel peep and uh, magnify the picture let's say like 300%. No need to do that. Watch it as 100% and that's it. If, if it's okay then it should be okay. And no matter who, if, if you're happy then don't let anybody say anything else. That's just the way it is. But let's start with the tips. The first one is use as low ISO as possible. Of course, this is a no-brainer. The lower the ISO, the better the image quality in that sense. If we, now we're talking about image quality in the, in the, text, in the, in the context of uh, noise. So bear that in mind when I say that. And it's always worth to try the extended low ISO if you have those in your camera. I've made a few tests and yes, you will get less noise if you use the ISO 64 or the ISO 100. It doesn't matter if you have the 64 or 100. Some Olympus cameras have only one, some have both of those, but in some cases that might be a good idea to use. But remember when using those extended ISOs you will lose a bit of uh, dynamic range. But of course you will have get less noise if that's what you want. And of course Olympus cameras have a very effective uh, IBIS, so it's always worth to try longer shutter speeds and then have the ISO lower rather than pumping up the ISO and have shorter shutter speeds. But that's of course a compromise and it depends on what you are making images of. But with Olympus cameras you can get handheld one second, two second, three second exposures no problem. So bear that in mind. And the second thing, image sharpness. And this is something that you might not think of when we're talking about noise. But if you look at your images, you will see more noise in the out of focus areas. Let's say you have a portrait and the eye is slightly out of focus. It will introduce some noise on that place. But if you have it pin sharp, no noise there or no noise, but less noise is the right way to say it. And this is always important that you get familiar with how your cameras uh, focusing system works, which size of focusing points to use in different uh, shooting scenarios or different subjects. And always remember for example for portraits use the face detection or the eye detection and that will get your images to be sharp place that you want them to be sharp. And usually portraits is the eye so bear that in mind also. And of course stopping down sometimes might get you better results in that sense. So if you're using, let's say, the f1.2 uh, on your 45 millimeter uh, portrait lens, you might only get the eye sharp, but and then the ear might be a bit blurred. But if you stop down a notch, you will get the ear also to be sharp. And usually it doesn't matter. It usually looks better for the clients or the, for the person that you're making portraits of. And you also will have less noise visible in the image and the image will look better. And a third tip, noise reduction in camera. And I know, I've said many times that I always have the noise reduction off in my Olympus cameras. But sometimes you might want to try it 
and have it on. The way it works, it has actually there are two ways of noise reduction. The first one is about the ISO and the second one is about long exposure. And the ISO is quite self-explanatory. The higher the ISO, more noise in the picture. But the second one is for long exposures and it's called noise reduction. And what it does, it will reduce noise if you have your shutter speed longer than four seconds. Let's say a five second exposure, it will take another shot after the five second exposure, another five second exposure, black image, and it will blend those images together so that it will reduce noise. Because noise is random in every picture, it's a bit different looking. If you take the same image, let's say you take uh, two pictures in a row with a very, very high ISO, both will have noise, but the noise will be in a different place. So when they blend two images together, it will reduce some noise. And here are some examples. Five seconds without the noise reduction, and this is five seconds with the noise reduction. As you can see, there is a bit of a difference. And if you use this, set it to be auto, then it will reduce noise only uh, for images that have longer shutter speed than four seconds. So this is the way, if you, if you really want to need this, this is maybe a best way to, to use the noise reduction on the Olympus camera. And then you have the noise filter, which will affect the ISO. It will use noise reduction in high ISO photographs. And here is a difference. Noise filter off and noise filter on. And there is also a bit of a difference. But this is something that you have to decide for yourself if you want to use noise reduction and the noise filter. It depends on all what you prefer and what you like is good enough for you. And then the fourth tip, image stacking. If you take several images of the same scene and stack those images using the average stacking method in Photoshop, you will get less noise in your images. And if you have enough images, let's say 10 to 20 images and using very high ISO, you will get a very, very clean image. And this is one of the best ways to get really, really a low amount of noise on your images. But of course it requires a lot of post-production and when you have 20 images stacking in Photoshop you need a very very fast computer. Of course with the, with the less power you will, it will take a longer time. But it's a worth a try. But, of, but as I said it requires a lot of post-production and might not be for everyone. And, can, and you also can imagine that if the subject is moving this is not the way to do it. But Remember that some of the Olympus cameras, EM1 Mark II and the EM1X, has 60 frames per second raw images. So you can take a burst of images and choose 10 to 20 images and stack them in Photoshop. And it's only, let's say that the 60 frames per second, so you get 60 images in a second. And let's say a bird might be still for one second and or less of half a second. And you only pick those images that are sharp. If, the, if there's been movement, then just don't use those images. In that way, stacking those, you will get a less noise in the images. And here are some examples of that. First, we have an image with, with just one image, high ISO, and this one is the same scene when images are stacked. Quite a big difference, isn't it? It's worth a try. I really recommend you trying that. It works really well, as you saw. Before I get into the fifth tip, there is a surprise. Yes, there will be another extra tip after the fifth one, which is, you know, always. And the fifth tip is have your exposure spot on. And this is the most important thing in everyday photography or any other photography. Have your exposure spot on. There are two advantages on that. You will get better image quality as a whole and then you will get a less noise in your images if you exposed to the right and I will explain that a bit but I have made a video about that and there will be an end screen in this video where you can click to see that video after you watch this. This is a really important thing and it's, it's said that full frame DSLRs have better image quality because the sensor is bigger but then if you use the optical viewfinder on your DSLR you are not able to get the perfect exposure because there is not enough information in the viewfinder to do so. It's pure luck if you get the uh, exposure spot on. Exposure meter in your camera, it's just the start where you start tweaking the exposure to your likings, which means usually expose to the right so that you have 
most of the information on your histogram on the right side. And it's all explained in the, in the, in the video that I just told that I've made before. It's like a two and a half year old video, but it still works. It's the same way. Usually the ones that use optical viewfinder in the DSLR, they just in case underexpose by one stop so that they won't get any clipping highlights. And then they have to lift up the exposure in post. And what happens when you lift up your exposure in, in post, you will lose some quality and you will introduce more noise to your image. So the advantage of the bigger sensor is gone compared to a micro four thirds camera where you expose exactly to the spot on with the, with the information that you have on the viewfinder. And that's why I think mirrorless cameras are totally better than, op than the traditional DSLRs, which are totally old school stuff. And then there is one method that can be very useful when photographing really, really dark scenes, like the night sky, for example. Here is an image that I took several years ago. I measured the light to be about bright at the ISO 3200, and I set the exposure manually. And then I raised the ISO to 12,800, and then I lowered the exposure in post, and I got rid of a lot of noise from that image. And this is also a very good way of getting rid of extra noise in your images. But remember, this only works if the scene is really dark and you have really, really big dark areas and, and small spotlights like stars, then it works. Otherwise, I wouldn't use that on a, on a normal scene. It, it wouldn't work because it would blow out everything. But on the night sky, it does work. And then the extra tips. As you saw on tip number four, image stacking is a great way of getting rid of noise in your images. But when I made the, my previous video about multiple exposure, I started to think about that this could be a very good way of reducing noise in your images. Because with multiple exposure, the camera stacks your images exactly the same way that the average way in Photoshop stacking method works. Of course, there are some limitations on this one. It's a bit slow way of doing it, but Simply the way it works is that you turn on the multiple exposure, you take those two images and then you take the third image so that you use the stacked image as a overlay and take the third one and then continue as many images as you want and always have the previous image as an overlay and this way you get, get so many images as you want. But of course there, as I said, there are limitations. It's a bit slow and you need to have a really sturdy tripod because if the camera slightly moves between the shots, it will be ruined because it doesn't work anymore. It will make a double exposure looking image. But in some cases, you might want to try that. It really works as you can see from these multiple exposure images. And you compare it to only one image that I took on the same place. There is a big difference and it's a worth a try also. And then there is the method of focus stacking, which works only on several Olympus cameras and with only several uh, lenses. So this is not for everybody, unfortunately. But this is a very effective method. You turn on the bracketing and then you turn on the focus stacking and making the images. And the camera will stack you all those images and you will have a lot less noise in your image than you would have if you only taken one image. And this is a very, very good way of getting rid of noise. But remember, it only works on several Olympus cameras and on several lenses. So it doesn't work with every combo that Olympus can offer. But it's a good, good way of doing. And of course, the downside on this one is, which is actually quite big, is that the stacked image is a JPEG image. So if you need to do a lot of post-processing on your, let's say on your landscape image, this is not the way. But it's an option to try to do in some cases. And as I said, all, all these special methods are worth a try and see if those work for you. But I've used them sometimes and I think it's a, it's a clever way of getting rid of noise. What are your methods of getting rid of noise in your Olympus camera or any other brand cameras? What do you do so that you get less noise? Is there anything that I missed? Any tricks and tips and tricks that I missed? But remember, the most important thing is to expose correctly. And that's why you might want to watch these two videos next. They are all about getting the perfect exposure. But hey, thanks for watching and bye for now.